Hi everybody and welcome to vodcast number 18 for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay and today we're going to be learning about cellular respiration. Um, don't get cellular respiration confused with uh, what goes on in your respiratory system um, because respiration is a much more complicated process than just breathing. Um, and uh, it primarily has to do with the harvesting of chemical energy that's stored in the molecule glucose. Okay, uh, yesterday we talked about uh, ATP and we uh, learned that ATP is sort of the universal currency that all cells use uh, and particularly that um, some enzymes make use of in order to power the reactions uh, that take place in cells. Um, to start off with, we're going to look at a, um, a chemical equation for cellular respiration, okay? Uh, everything on here should be familiar to you, okay? This, of course, is what? Is, is glucose, right? Uh, so this is one molecule of glucose, uh, and we combine that with six molecules of oxygen, all right? And that gives us six carbon dioxides plus six molecules of water. Uh, the other important thing that happens in this process is that we get um, an, several molecules of ADP plus phosphate converted into ATP. Uh, we get one, much more than one. We actually get somewhere in the order of 37 uh, that get converted during this process. So this is, uh, this is our primary means of recharging that ATP rechargeable battery. Cellular respiration is uh, really what does that for us. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you first of all just a quick overview uh, of the process and then we're going to get into the details. Um, cellular respiration involves several substances that we've already talked about. Uh, glucose being one. Glucose, of course, is a six carbon sugar, as you can tell from the C6. And also we use this little uh, hexagon shape to represent that. Uh, the other thing that we use is oxygen, which is designated O2. Uh, and then we also uh, ultimately end up with a one carbon molecule. We end up with six of these because we started off with six carbons over here. Uh, and then we also end up with some water. And then along the way, we get some ATP uh, converted from ADP plus phosphate. Now, there are sort of three sub-processes that are involved in, in cellular respiration. The first is called glycolysis. Glyco, uh, as you may remember, uh, means sweet and refers to sugar. And anything that undergoes a lysis is broken. So glycolysis means to break sugar. All right, so now if you think about this, if I have a six carbon sugar and I break it in half, I'm, when I break anything in half, I'm going to have, of course, two halves. Uh, and the substance that I get from breaking a six carbon sugar is a three carbon substance called pyruvic acid. Okay, these we've drawn as a, as a triangle to represent uh, that it's a three carbon substance. Okay, um, this happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. This happens, uh, is done by various enzymes that are floating around in the cytoplasm of all of our cells. Uh, everything else here takes place in the mitochondria. Okay, um, in the course of this, we get uh, a little bit of ATP uh, and we also get something called NADH converted from NAD+. NADH is what we call an electron carrier. And NADH um, basically picks up a hydrogen uh, and then also picks up a high energy electron. Um, and we'll have a little bit more to say that and just you know, about that, what that means in just a minute. Okay, so pyruvic acid is the result of glycolysis. Pyruvic acid is brought into the, uh, the mitochondria or mitochondrion, uh, and it enters a, a process called the citric acid cycle. Now, this is a whole chain of chemical reactions. Uh, there are somewhere around 10 or 12 different enzymes involved in a bunch of different uh, reactions that, that take place. We get a couple molecules of ATP. 
Uh, and this is also the point where the, the carbons are broken off of the, the sugar and we get some carbon dioxide uh, released in, as part of the, uh, the citric acid cycle. Okay, so the, the main thing that comes from the citric acid cycle into the next step, which is called oxidative phosphorylation, um, is NADH, uh, which is converted back to NAD+. You may remember back here, we were converting NAD plus to NADH. This is using those high energy electrons that we made in this step or that we that we harvested in this step uh, and it's removing them off the NAD plus and it's uh, used in this step called oxidative phosphorylation. Now, as you might guess, oxidative sounds like oxygen and you would be right. Uh, and this is where the oxygen comes into the process. Um, and this is also, whoops, this is the step um, where we get the most ATP out of the process from the wildly spinning little ATP thing here. Um, we get uh, the most ATP comes from, from this particular step. Okay, just remember the blue boxes are processes, okay? The orange or yellow uh, little shapes represent substances, okay? So this is a substance. This is converted from this into this. Uh, this is a substance, this is a process. So any of the blue boxes or blue circles represent some process that's taking place. Okay, first step in cellular respiration. Uh, well, first we have to know a little bit about the mitochondria. Uh, and there are four parts of the mitochondria that you need to know. Uh, the first is that we have an outer membrane. Uh, we have an inner membrane. And so when you have an outer and an inner membrane, then you have a space in between the outer and the inner, and we call that the intermembrane space. Uh, and then, the, then you have a very innermost uh, space, which has the very cool name of being called the matrix. So I don't know why it gets this cool name, but it does. So this is the innermost region of the mitochondrion. Okay, uh, as you recall, oh, incidentally, uh, this diagram you should do on the left-hand page. Uh, the previous one, uh, this one, you should do on the right-hand page if you haven't already. Um, as long as you have some, if you already did this on the right-hand page, that's fine. Uh, but be sure you leave plenty of room for this step. Okay, glucose comes into glycolysis. And as we already said, glycolysis is a breaking of sugar. And from this broken sugar, from, we get from this six carbon substance, we get a three carbon substance called pyruvic acid. Okay, in addition to that, we get a little bit of ATP. We get two molecules of ATP produced by this, and we get several molecules of this NADH stuff. Okay, uh, again, think of this as we're, part of what happens here is the energy uh, that's released from, from uh, breaking apart that glucose molecule goes to boost an electron into an excited state uh, and that's what's carried on this NADH molecule. Okay, the pyruvic acid comes into the matrix. The NADH is carried into the intermembrane space. Uh, this is uh, made possible by uh, various pumps that are present in these um, in these membranes. Okay, uh, so we have now a bunch of NADH in this intermembrane space, um, and now our citric acid cycle takes place uh, again in the in the matrix of the mitochondria. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this pyruvic acid, this six carbon sugar, or I'm sorry, three carbon substance, is broken down into carbon dioxide, which of course uh, each of these is one of the carbons, okay? Now, if you remember the glucose is C6H12O6, so for each glucose, we're, we're going to get um, essentially um, one spin around the citric acid, or rather, actually, we're gonna get two spins around the citric acid cycle. Um, and so each pyruvic acid uh, is gonna give us three carbon dioxides, okay? So that accounts for our carbon. Uh, some of our oxygen, we, we must have another source of oxygen and we'll see where that comes from in just a minute. Uh, but our hydrogen uh, is basically all going into the NADH. Okay, so that's the H in the NADH. 
and, and that's where that is that's where that hydrogen is going okay um, the other thing we, we do get a little bit of ATP again from the citric acid cycle this is per glucose uh, we get two ATPs so again not an awful lot of um, not an awful lot of ATP uh, generated in this a little bit here a little bit here but what we do also get uh, from the citric acid cycle is a lot of this NADH uh, is, is generated. And so we get a lot of these high energy uh, electrons are actually the, the, um, the NADH molecules which are carrying those uh, are, are now in the matrix of the, or the intermembrane space, excuse me, of the, um, of the mitochondrion. Okay, that brings us to our last step which is oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, and as you might have guessed, oxidative phosphorylation does involve oxygen, okay, as the name suggests. Um, it also, when we phosphorylate something, uh, phosphorylation means to basically stick a phosphate onto something, okay? So if you slap a, phos a phosphate uh, onto your dog at home, then you have phosphorylated your dog. Uh, but what we're going to, of course, phosphorylate here is ADP. We're going to stick a phosphate onto an ADP, and that will give us uh, ATP. Okay, and as you might have guessed, oxygen is going to come into this process. Now, oxygen is especially useful because oxygen loves electrons. Um, oxygen is what we sort of call a uh, an electron hog. If all of these chemicals represent little kids in a sandbox, oxygen is the little kid that doesn't want to share its toys. Uh, it's the one that doesn't play well with others. The toys being electrons, oxygen wants to keep everything for itself. Um, that's a, a, a sort of a human description. The chemical description is that oxygen is highly electronegative, uh, but um, it really means the same thing. Oxygen is a, a sucker upper of electrons. So these high energy electrons that are released from NADH as we uh, release those, uh, oxygen is a very willing recipient. Um, and the other thing that is around, of course, here is hydrogen because hydrogen is being uh, liberated in, in this process. So we're, we're removing both hydrogens and a high energy electron, which gives us this positive charge. Um, so what do we end up with? Well, the oxygen ends up going in to make uh, water. So we get water molecules that are produced. And here is the big jackpot of this whole complicated process. We get not one, not two, but 34. Yes, folks, count them. 34 ATPs. Holy cow. That is the big payoff of oxidative phosphorylation. Um, now, you'll notice that every step before here did not require oxygen. But look at this, we just got this shabby little four ATPs is all we got out of, uh, out of our glucose molecule coming up to this point, okay? What, this, what oxygen allows us to do is get way more ATP out of our glucose molecule. So this makes for a much more efficient use um, of, uh, of our glucose. Okay, allows us to get much more usable energy out of each molecule of glucose. Okay, uh, this is the main things that I need to tell you about on this. Uh, we will be talking about this in class some more. Uh, and tomorrow on the next podcast, uh, we're going to be looking at what happens in the body if uh, for some brief amount of time, oxygen is not present, and we call that anaerobic. This, of course, has been aerobic cellular respiration because we've got our good buddy O2 oxygen, uh, that little electron hog uh, is, is present. Okay, uh, I hope this was useful to you, and you may want to go back and look at it again. Uh, this has been vodcast number 18 for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. See you later.